three up, two across, tap that play button three times and walk through the archway into Dialogue Alley. Hello and welcome to Dialogue Alley, a podcast all about Harry Potter books, book translations, and all other things magical. I'm Melanie. I'm Carly. And I'm Eric. Hi, everybody. <laughs> that was so cute because I wrote our names in all different orders and everyone still managed it. So I'm proud almost, of you guys. I almost didn't. <laughs> I know, Carly. I I could see in her face that she almost said I'm Eric. So well I done. Did. I did. <laughs> I almost said I'm Eric again, and I was like, no, wait, that's not who I am. <laughs> Silly. Silly goose. Well, if you are new to our podcast, we are a bunch of really silly, apparently, (laughs) Harry Potter book translation collectors. And what that means is we collect Harry Potter books in all different languages from all over the world. There are so many of them. We're going to talk about that in this episode because I'm confused. How's that? (laughs) How about them apples? Because this word macro translation has been coming up and it is literally giving me what... uh, my Yiddish side, we the agita is the agita. That's what it gives me. I'm laughing so much agita these your, days. Your face. Everybody. I'm laughing because your face when you said I'm confused made me chuckle. <laughs> I am. Oh my gosh, we're going to talk about all of that because this episode, which is season three, episode twenty-one of our podcast, we are going to be answering your questions. We haven't done this in a really long time, we and haven't. it used to be some of like my favorite episodes. I love answering the questions. Yeah, well, we were going to do it last week, but it didn't end up working out, so we're doing it this week. Last week, I had the sorest of sore throats. Usually, I, if I get I a sore sick. throat, it it usually lasts me a day and then it turns into sniffles and this was not the case. I had a sore throat for three days and I thought I was going to pass. It was not mm. good. I was really sick as well. Not good. So yeah. Eric did, did a work. crazy cool episode. Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty fun. I recorded an episode and then I left for Kansas City to go to a concert. And I drove home. And it looked like you <laughs> had so much fun, though. Like, I loved I seeing so your pictures. It's so crazy. And, like, it's crazy to me because when I'm, like, telling my friends, I love Bruce Springsteen. So I went to the Bruce Springsteen concert in Kansas City. I'm also going to the one here in St. Paul in, like, a week from Sunday. And I also just bought tickets to the show in Winnipeg because that's not that far away from no, me also. you're right and by there. by that far, I mean, like, six to seven hour drive to Kansas City and 6 to 7 to, to Winnipeg. That's not a big deal for me. I know no. like you, Melanie, like if you were to drive 6 to 7 hours, you could probably get somewhere way further away than two states uh, away. If I um, when I was in, when I was in Texas, if I drove 6 to 7 hours, I was still in Texas. You're still so. in Texas, right? So I, I feel like I'm kind of halfway in between that, but like my European friends, they're like, "What? You drove somewhere for six hours? I'm like, yeah, it was easy. It's one road. You just drive, and then you stop for lunch somewhere, and you keep driving. It's yeah. not that hard. Yeah, and you listen to a good audiobook or good music. It's really not hard. I love podcasts. Or you podcast. go with a couple people, and you talk or, to each other for five, six podcast. hours. Or podcast. Yeah, oh, or you listen well, to I wasn't gonna listen. I wasn't going to listen to my own podcast on the road trip. <laughs> but you listening, you could listen to our podcast while you're driving <laughs> six to seven hours. To, to see, see Bruce, Bruce Springsteen, Springsteen in a state near you. <laughs> I told you guys that we're a little silly today. Oh, boy. We're a little silly. Just today. Right. So, like I mentioned, our main segment today is going to be answering your questions, which we're really excited about. We have a little snippet of news, a little newslet, if you will. And as always... We are going to have a great translation of the show. Did you guys see what the translation of the show is? I did now, and it's fabulous. Yeah, we're continuing the theme of let's pick one that Eric doesn't have. We've and had a lot of feedback. I own it, but it's not in my house, so we're in the same boat, kind of. I know. We've had a oh, lot okay. of feedback on the Discord about um, mixing it up and not always doing book one, which I doesn't that, necessarily. Though. Yeah, it but, doesn't lean well to Eric's collection. Right. But, no, it doesn't. But. 
Um, but this leans well to the theme of talking Eric into buying things he doesn't know that he needs yet. I didn't know that was an official theme. That's more you know like what? a sub theme. It's no, it's an official a theme. A macro at this theme. Point. A macro theme. <laughs> a macro theme. <laughs> it is. We're gonna we just throw didn't around know that, that word. <laughs> we're gonna blame we're gonna blame Canada for that term, but we'll talk about that in, in a little bit. Oh, stay tuned. All right, let's get into <laughs> let's get into news first. So we just have a little bit of news. Um, one of the coolest bits of news that I think is so great and has to be mentioned is, um, you know, we're so we're so like in love with our discord and our community that we've created um, through Dialogue Alley. It's something we're so proud of. And it's just because. Our community is just very niche and what we do is very niche. So finding other people that are super passionate about something that we're passionate about is very amazing to us. Um, And I feel like when Carly and I first started out in this world of collecting and Eric too, but Eric, Eric joined our little, our little, uh, our little team later on in the game, but um, it's weird because it was something that we're all probably doing around the same time, yeah, but we just didn't we know just each didn't other know doing it. For sure. Right? For sure. But yeah. when Carly and I first started this out, it was really like me, Carly, a couple other people, and Peter. And we were very close with Peter. And Peter's community was not – it was about what our communities are right now, like what my brand is, what Carly's brand is. That's what Peter was at the time that we started collecting this. And – he has just taken off and, you know, he's one of our very, very dear friends. And it's so cool to be able to say that, like, we it's like we knew him when when he was just like, you know, our buddy that we started on this collector, a wee little Potter collector that we like started <laughs> on this journey with. So it's just like it's so cool. And it's so cool to see him where he is now. And it's I don't know. I I just I have like so much pride for him because he's also just the most humble, wonderful human beings on this planet. Oh, yeah. And, he's one of our favorite people. And where I'm getting with with all of this is he also is that he's remodeling his kitchen. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Wait, I mean, and it looks also really, that, awesome. that's really like our news. Come on. I'm, 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 I'm trying to suck up the sap. Hold on. OK, <laughs> I'm, sucking, I'm sucking it up. Um, suck it up. <laughs> um. <laughs> what I'm getting at is that Peter started a Discord and it's a place where his community can like have kind of what we have, you know, with our community. It's so cool. It's so extensive and there are so many people in it that I'm very overwhelmed by it. Um, but it just makes me so proud to see that Peter's community has grown so much. It's just so awesome. Um, so if you're not a part of his Discord, join his Discord. It's so cool. It's awesome. It's free. And it's free. It's free. It's free. Just join it. Just and join it's it awesome. to be like, part there's always of the someone to talk to. There's always someone to talk to. Which, not for nothing, there's someone to talk to in our Discord as our well. Our Discord <laughs> is also super awesome. But like Melanie said, but, we but love our But it's more Discord. niche. Our Discord yeah. is very, very niche. And um, but it's full of amazing people. It is, it is, it is, but it isn't. I'm saying it's niche in that, like, ours is really based on translation collecting. That's how we started this whole thing. You know, it's like, that's what the podcast and, is about. And everyone that's in our Discord is there because they listen to our podcast. And like you just said, if they listen to our podcast, their Harry Potter focus is a little more niche than just the traditional I love Harry Potter fan, right. which on Peter's Discord, you get the I love Everything. Harry Potter fan. And the niche people also. So, like, I've had a really good time talking with some people on, like, the books and yes. collections channel. Yeah. Because that's kind of where I hang out. Because, honestly, that's my thing. That's why I have this podcast. That's why I'm on the Discord with all you folks. <laughs> is because that's my niche. And what that that's the part of the Harry Potter fandom that brings me the most joy. So, um, I, I actually, like, talked to some other cool people that have translations. And... We're talking about um, editions and prints of U.S. books last so cool. night with a couple people that 
that didn't know kind of what to look for with their books. So like it's it's kind of fun just to engage with some more people that have a bit of interest in the things that I'm interested in. And it's easy to find that on his because there are so many people and so many channels that it would be impossible not to find someone that shares some part of the Harry Potter fandom interest with you. Yes. That's a really cool exactly. Discord. It's so cool. So like I said, it is free to join. His Discord is there. It's awesome. So yeah, so proud of Peter and so excited for him that he has this going on now. Really, really cool. Um, the other bit of news. So hold on. I'm looking at the calendar because what day is it? I don't know. I'm in the middle of like winter break from work. So today is Wednesday, February 22nd. We are mid blizzard up here I thought in it was City. And mid blizzard here in Salt Lake. Two oh, stories. and I think that your blizzard is like started is like heading my way. Um, OK, yeah. so. So this episode's going to come out for everybody on the 28th, and then the following episode won't come out until the 7th. So it's good to talk about this now, because on yeah. March 5th is, is what we've deemed as Harry Potter Collector Day. Um, and that's something that we've been doing for years now at this point, where it's really just a yeah. day everyone kind of When did that post start? Pictures. 2017, 18? Yeah. Something like that. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Is this like the fifth one? It's been it's been running for a quite a bit. Um, but so cool. It's just a day where people post pictures of their collections with the hashtag Harry Potter Collector Day. Um, just really and cool. We can do Participate. Really neat for that. We. I wonder what we could do. Something. Hmm. It's really cool. I don't to post. Know. We'll do something. I'm sure we will. Also, I think that's also Peter's birthday, isn't it? Yeah, which I think it just kind of like happened organically that way. Like it wasn't super intentional that it turned out to be on it his wasn't. birthday. It just um it just, just when we decided to do yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like there was like a council of Harry Potter collectors that kind of like decided, like, hey, let's do this thing. And well, uh, I think he was the one who started ran this the thing. idea past people, like, hey, let's have a Harry Potter collector day. And his birthday was coming up, and I think that's how it just kind of Started. Yeah, we were just like, why not this day? I think we wanted it to be on somewhat of like a random day. Um, he did. But yeah. yeah, he did. But it's a good day. Like, Harry, there's so many good pictures. Like, if you go onto Instagram, especially Instagram, but I'm sure other social medias, and you Google like Harry Potter Collector Day or hashtag Harry Potter Collector Day, you'll see lots of really neat pictures from all the different years that it's been a thing. And it is really I'm fun. I'm looking there's it up been right Giveaways now. that have gone on. There's been live feeds that have gone on. Like, it's just, it's a really fun day where collectors kind of come together. It's really fun. It's so cool because it has over 5,000 posts, that hashtag at this point. That's um, really cool, you guys. Yeah, I'm, I'm just really proud of that. That's very cool. And there are, there are so many collectors that participate, which is, um, which is really cool. So, yeah. Uh, if you're listening to this, get ready because March 5th is that day. So stay tuned. Um, all right. Do we have any other news? I don't have anything else written down. I don't Not know. really. Guys, I caught a unicorn in Hogwarts Legacy. So I've got that going for me. <laughs> you caught it like to keep it as a pet? That's all I'm going to say, Eric. And uh, I'm going to leave oh, it at that. Dear. I'm going to leave it at that. Becoming like a unicorn, a unicorn breeder. I'm not going to say anything you've, else. You've uh, bypassed all the main quests of the game and you are just going to spend all your next 37 hours in the forest collecting unicorns for your unicorn rant. <laughs> there shall be no <laughs> other spoilers other than me saying I caught a unicorn. That's it. Okay. That's all I'm going right. to say. Leaving it there. Say. Leaving it there. Um, oh, just to go back, uh, this is going to be the sixth Harry Potter Collector Day. Oh, wow. Crazy? Oh, okay. Sixth wow. one. Yeah. I was just kind of, I was looking back. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That would have to be 2000, I guess, 18, would it be, or 2017? I can't wow. maths. I'm, I'm not mathing right <laughs> maths. now either, but, but I think it's 17. Wow. Well, That's impressive. 2023 minus 5 would be 2018. 
Eric, so, I said I don't know math right now. Just skip the 20. 23 minus 5 is 18. My degrees I know, but are it's the business sixth and, ma- one, and six. like languages. It's the Oh, it's the sixth one? Six. Yes. This is why this is oh, why we don't so, yeah. math. Okay. This is why we don't maths. Because well, I, sorry, I okay. thought you, don't you math said either, so You don't Sixth. math either. You don't math either. Just admit it. You don't no, math my, either. My maths, my maths was correct if I was doing minus five, but I guess we're doing minus six. So, yes, you're then right. 2017. La, Hashtag la, la. maths. Hashtag UK. <laughs> I'm right, giving guys, you uh, a face. Uh, <laughs> let's get into our main segment. Yay! The main segment is answering questions. How cool is that, you guys? Um, That's pretty cool. Carly, how are you doing? Me, I'm great. Are you okay? All right, that was question one. Um, (laughs) Do you think the rare translations will appreciate and value as the rare US? She's getting right into it. (laughs) Yeah. She's just getting right into those questions. (laughs) I was told to read them, so I did. I just think it's funny because Eric's trying to tease you and you're just you're just down to business. You're all about the business. All I about am. that business right now. <laughs> I'm very businessy. Um, but I think it's actually. Okay, what was that, what wait, was wait, that wait, question wait, again? Say ask, the question ask, again. Ask, say it again because we weren't paying ask attention. Ask the question again. I, first, I'm going to preface this by saying I actually really think this is a very good question that needs to be discussed. Do you think the rare okay. translations will appreciate and value as well as the rare U.S. U.K. books? Um, oh, I think that's a very good thing that actually does need to be discussed because there's separate markets and they're very separate collectorships in a way. Right. I do both. I do rare US UK books and I do translations and I do sign things. Um, I think you should t- talk about briefly what are the like considered rare US UK books the rare U.S. Because there, there is a cutoff for those, really. Yeah. Well, really, the rare U.S. book is book one. And I'm going to even venture, arguably, it's not even rare. It's just high in, in demand and valued, but it's not rare. There's yeah, 30 to 35,000 of them, so they're not rare. In fact, I don't even own one that's not signed. Like, all of the first, with the exception of the one that is incredibly misprinted, which I actually bought for resale and kept because it is printed upside down. Um. And there's a misprint on the jacket, which is why I kept it. Um, there's there, you can find them. They're not super rare. They're just in high demand. You're talking like U.S. Sorcerer's first edition, stone. First, first, first printing, first print, printing. Sorcerer's, Sorcerer's stone, stone. Um, hardcover, hardcover, right? Not the soft cover. Um, then we have the Bloomsbury books, one, two, and three, first edition, first print, hardcover. Which matters when you're discussing really book one, but first print hardcover books one, two, and three, those are really where the cutoff is, right? Unless you're going to get into like deluxe editions and things like that. And that's, but there's, there's more rare, high valued, I'm not even going to say rare, high valued books with UK Bloomsbury than there is US. Yeah, because even the soft cover bloomsbury first print first edition oh yeah multi multi thousand dollar book at this point right unsigned Um, not so much not so much chamber or azkaban well chamber well because book one was published simul blah published simultaneously in hard and soft cover but only book one right so soft cover books two and three came after the first edition hardcover books two and three by a year each so there's right. Time so in, by that point, they've made a bunch more. Right. So the soft cover books two and three, even first prints, they're fun to have, but okay, they're they're not valuable if you're going to get into value of things and collectability. The hardcover is where the value is. Um, soft cover book one, hardcover book one, of course, and then hardcover books two and three, and then of course deluxe editions, but and others, but. There's 
there's more than U.S. Yeah, I. Uh, U.S. It's really book one, first print, first edition, book one, and the JLG. What, if, what about advanced reader copies? Just touch on that. I would say yeah. Those would appreciate in value over those time. Those have hyper. For sure. Those is those have definitely hyperinflated. The advanced reader copies are ARCs. Books two or one, two, and three have definitely got up in value. <sighs> Although I don't know how much of it is real value and hype or hyperinflated. It's very hard for me mm-hmm. to tell right now. I've seen the ARC or advanced reader copy of Azkaban, which is US, sell for anywhere between 500 and 1200. And I feel like the 1200 copy sold because somebody didn't know they could pay less. And I, yeah, I still crazy. think that way. Same with book two. Um, people see them. They're like, oh, my goodness, it's rare. And then they post it on eBay saying, oh, my goodness, it's rare. And then people buy it thinking, oh, my goodness, it's rare. Um, and I take issue sometimes with the values that I'm seeing that it's sold for. So I'm still trying to kind of get a bead on that market um, to tell if it's really yep. hyperinflated yep. or really gone up in value. I can't really tell yet. The, the proof yep. copies of Bloomsbury. They're just way up there, right? They, when I was first yeah. collecting proofs, they were fifteen hundred eight. I paid eight hundred dollars once for a proof of of Chamber of Secrets. It was in poor condition, but still eight hundred dollars. Eight, you not even pound. It was like six hundred pounds, eight hundred dollars shipped. It's wild. Um, I know. And now, like, you can't even buy a first print Chamber of Secrets hardcover for that, let alone a proof copy. That's just unreal. I think when we talk about over time as the key part of this question, um, which is what appreciation is, right? Like the U.S. advanced reader copies, they're not made particularly well. Um, none of the pr- advanced like the pay- copies, the, the proofs aren't no, either. They're- none of them are. So I, I think as time goes on, You're gonna- these books, these books might become more valuable just because like the pages aren't coated in anything well and, and the, they the cover, wear they're soft cover they books rub, and like, they wear really right. easily so, they rub the, um, the and they you're gonna see less and less of them as time goes on but but we i believe that the number three thousand was confirmed for book one so and then we've just kind of tacked that number onto books two and three so there's a lot more of them than there are of the proof copies which are arguably minimal Minimal, minimal, like 150, 200, 300 it's at in the hundred, best. It's in the yeah. hundreds, not the thousands, for sure. At best. Um, and those were, of course, sent out first. They were thrown away, some of them, because they didn't know what the book was, especially book one. And even, you know, Sorcerer's Stone ARCs were probably tossed to a point because they didn't know what the book was. Brand new author, brand new, you know, Arthur Levine didn't have a name. Scholastic did, did but Arthur Levine with Scholastic didn't. Um, and they just didn't know. They just didn't know. So we've lost some to time and you're going to continue to lose some to time. We've seen some, especially Chamber of Secrets, ARCs that have been incredibly worn. Right. That have showed up and I've seen the same one show up on eBay. It has the same telltale wear signs, lots of folding on the cover, lots of creasing, definitely been red kind of thing. And at one point, as they should be right. Right. Yeah. Well, And that's what it was supposed to have been. It was meant for these were sent out to members of the press and people to write reviews. This is how they got reviews for some of these books, especially the newer ones. Um, And. This one particular copy I'm thinking of, at one point I saw it probably 2014 for $75. Yeah, and now I think the last time I saw it sell on eBay was like for 470 I think of the three of us, I was the last one to get all three of them. And yes. book one was my last copy. Um, and I found and Carly, that you. And Carly, you helped me find that, right? Yeah. And that was... That was still. I can't remember what I ended up spending on that, but it wasn't that much. Four fifty. Like two, three hundred bucks. It was four fifty. Yeah, it was four fifty. Four fifty. Yep. Um, which was a little high for me, but at that point, like, like you just mentioned, they were only selling for more and more. So I'm like, wow, yeah. this is a good, a good, uh, a good buy for book one, especially. 
Um, although I will say, I think of the three book three is my favorite just because it doesn't have a cover, right? It's just yeah, it's the, pretty cool. The, yeah, the purple and black diamond pattern. So, um, just looking at like a really cool kind of pre book look, which I think people expect with the advanced reader edition or like the Bloomsbury books that don't even have a cover. Um, the U.S. book three is kind of the closest you can get to that vibe. It's just the diamond pattern. Um, so I. So I think I think that aesthetic, honestly, people gravitate towards that. That's what I gravitated towards when I was collecting them. I'm like, oh, like I want book three. It's the purple and black diamonds. Like that's really cool. So that's why um, it and sells like the, more. The I think chapter than book- art's not in there because right. it hasn't been made yet. Like that's mm-hmm. so cool. And the cover page is still from book one. Well, it yeah, it's just that's or not I think cover because page, they had to rush it out page. so fast. Well, it was the title page. Yeah, the, they had to scoot up the art. So, book three was originally supposed to be published later than it was. The date got pushed to when it was, so it could be published simultaneously, or not simultaneously, but soon, much sooner, because there was a lawsuit with book two and all of these different things. So they they pushed the date up, right? And so they had to do. They had Mary Gunn Pratt and finished the art. So they just had the checkerboard, the purple and black checkerboard. And then they just had the is, title page from book one. Which is super cool. That's mm-hmm. what I dig. So I, I think when we talk about rare translations, um, that was the other part of the question and how translations will appreciate in value. That's really, really hard for me to say as an American because I'm collecting these books in the United States. I don't live in these other countries. So um, well, like... Even even though like we know what the the print run for some of these books are, um, especially ones that are not published anymore, it we're not, we don't live in another country, so we don't know like we don't have a group of friends that live down the street that all have a book from their childhood that you know we can kind of relate to here. So even though we know the print run is relatively small for some of them, like we still don't know for sure how many there are out there and what the demand for people to want to buy them in their respective countries are going to be versus like exporting them to people like you and me and Melanie um, for, for collecting purposes. So I I feel like that's really hard to gauge um, especially when you see books like Macedonian that we think are really hard to find, but then all of a sudden people know that they're selling and so they start selling them all. So it really does have this ebb and flow um, for the collector market. And it, it, it's hard to kind of predict you know, where they'll end up five, ten years from now. Um, but I will say, like, the books that we know have a limited print run, like, let's say, like, Malayalam or Asturian, obviously those books should appreciate in value because there's such a limited amount of them. Carly, you're giving me a strange face, so... She's been, like, going like this. Everything I'm going to say, but that was my opinion. I know. And Melanie nodded. Melanie nodded at least once during that, so she <laughs> half agrees with me at least. I'm biting my tongue because I don't want to talk over you because what I agree with what you're saying. So I was just filling my cheeks with air so I'd be quiet. Oh, okay. Well, that's better then. <laughs> um, but as far as what's rare, what I was going to say is what is rare changes. Because we see that drastically all the time. Yes. What is rare changes? I go back to thinking originally like Bosnian book one, two, and three were rare once upon a time. Then they reprinted, right? But now the first editions of those translations are still rare. The translation itself is not. So it depends on your criteria of what rare is. Then we have and that, things. And that, honestly, that that changes. Sorry to interrupt there, but some people don't care. No. Like we had this conversation in our Discord. Like I personally don't care if I have a first printing of the Bosnian or if I have the reprinting of the Bosnian. I happen to have a first printing and I feel kind of like, Ugh. I paid more for that than if I just waited like six months. But, but you didn't know. know. You didn't know. But I didn't know, right? And like it's... the same thing of like, you know, Malayalam or Gujarati reprint. Mm-hmm. That wouldn't affect my collecting criteria as like a book knowledge person in general. I would know like, oh, I have a first printing of this book that came out over, you know, 15 years ago. Or I'm, I'm a person now getting the book. Like, it doesn't matter. But right. I think when, when you extend the criteria to that, like, oh, but I have a first printing Bosnian, like, the amount of people that are collecting that or looking for that book is relatively small, especially, um, like, foreign foreigners from, from not the country that the book is published in. 
because I think that that goes down extremely quick once once you get out of the country it's in. I can see maybe if you were living in Bosnia and Herzegovina and you're like, oh, I really want to collect a first print, first edition Harry Potter in my language. There's probably more a demand for that in Bosnia than there's going to be in, um, I don't know, Germany. So well, like, it, it's hard because to get out of the country, it, it's a totally different thing. And we're not. We're not on the ground there to, to, to gauge that. And I know most translation collectors don't care about print. I've met a few who do. Most don't. Most care about text block differences. If there's a tech, like a big major text block difference, like major yeah, revised, art. like Germany revised, Italian revised, you know, uh, mainland Chinese revised or cover Take, art. Hold, stop. Stop one second. Germany revised. Yeah. Yeah. 20th anniversary is revised text block. You're saying this like it like we should know this. Yeah. But you a, just blew our mind. I don't know this. Yeah, like it's it, like the 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 page like the book 1 chapter 1 title like chapter 1 title is different. It's not a boy who lived, it's the boy who lived. Very different. So 20th anniversary Germany revised. Stupid, so the, stupid macro. Ma- it's, this is the macro, the macro language. This is the macro edition. So, like, it makes me want to pull my eyebrows out. <laughs> I'm pulling so them like, out. That's what I care about. Are those kind? And actually, there's been some small, slight grammar revisions between Bosnia and going back to that. I sat, and it's just small grammar things, making grammar more clear. So it doesn't change the meaning of things, ish, but there's some grammar things because I did compare the two text blocks between books one and of the revised and the first edition, or the, All right, the I just reprint. Have to talk, we have to we have to like talk to Sean about if this German revised. I always go back to his phrase of like, does I, it make it linguistically interesting? Like, is it different enough that it's linguistically interesting? The chapter one of book one is linguistically interesting enough for me but i've not read much past the first page of the german and i don't think there's many more differences but it is not like what the first edition is a boy who lived so it's very vague it's a boy random boy it's not specific then they revise with the 20th anniversary with the jacopo bruno and it's the boy it's very specific the boy who lived and if you I'm can hear it Sean. on my, um, the book that lives, you can hear the difference between the two. I, I think right. we should skip to this other question now. We have, so, I, think we this have, I know, we have so many questions. This segues right into that. And oh. then we'll, we'll circle back to another question about I, Ted Smart book. Yeah, so I, I added that I question. I do want to wrap yes, this Carly, question up really, really fast. Do this yes, one. I think they will. Oh, okay. Yes, I think that they will appreciate. We've already seen it. We see, we've seen a story and go from... $450 value to 3000 knowingly selling. So, yes, if you want to invest your money in them, I think it's there. Especially, and I will add one last thing, especially books that we know have only printed maybe book one or maybe books one and two. The short Or even sets. books one, yeah. two, and three. The short sets. And like we mentioned um, a few episodes ago with the Ossetan, like especially if they've only done one or two books and it's been 10 years since you know, the last one that they've printed has come out. That to me seems very unlikely that we'll see kind of a resurgence of that. Um, so yeah, I think those would be good investments, even if they're ones that are easier to get, like they're not doing more. So right. um, I guess get them, get them now while you still can. Cause we've seen like Kamai, right. From Cambodia. Mm-hmm. We mentioned that a few episodes ago. It's hard to find. And it wasn't a few years ago because they just don't make more. So um, I agree. I, I think they do also appreciate and value. Yeah. So I think yes, to answer the question, short answer, yes. Long answer is a big one. Um, what does the difference in value look like for U.S. Oh. Book Club editions versus Ted Smart Books? Because Ted Smart Books have different print runs. Okay. So Ted this Smart. This was something that came up in on Facebook like I saw big that time. I saw that thread and I was sick and didn't get to get back to that. It was just driving me nuts the whole thing because I And it's a I'm very just gonna good topic. go ahead and say Yeah, I I mean just to like isolate the question a little bit, like someone had someone had posted a book club edition saying I selling first edition, yeah. first printing and I know the post you're a talking bunch about of people, it drove me crazy. 
Yeah, and a bunch of people were saying like, whoa, 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 this is not a first edition first printing. This is a book club edition. And someone was kind of like debating it, trying to say that, Oh, several well, were. They were still saying it should sell for several hundred. Two people that I saw sold yeah. it, said that it should sell for that instead of thousands. And I was like, um, maybe 10. No, no, no. And and I was saying like, yeah, uh, I was saying like U.S. book club editions, like you shouldn't be paying more than like 20 bucks for one. And like that being said, it's just I feel like I have it for like, like, you know, when one um when Slughorn says like purely academic like I just have it like I that's the reason why I have my book club edi- editions is just like to have it's good them to know that they're they there. don't I like yeah, to they know don't, that they're there they don't have any value there are so many of these books they they are not worth they're not worth it and but someone was saying that that was different for Ted Smart books because Ted Smart books have print runs our book club editions don't because they use the same um, text block for the copyright page as a first print. That's where a lot of the confusion comes in with book club editions. But the Ted Smarts, from what I'm learning, is different. So, Carly, Discuss. explain the explain <laughs> the difference between a Bloomsbury UK book and a Ted Smart Ted Smart UK book okay. in simple Simon terms. Ted, they're both secondary publishers. End of story. They're both secondary publishers. Neither one will ever be considered first edition. Cuts value right there. Ted Smart does have print runs. Technically, our book clubs do too. It's just not noted. Right? They didn't note it on the print run. They didn't care. They just reprinted them. There are lots of different book clubs. For example, to be a part of a U.S. book club, if I wanted to be a part of the Dialogue Alley book club, which I think is an amazing thing, um, oh, and it should be in the I, future, I, I think. I totally agree. So we would find books that we wanted to be a part of this book club, and we would send them out to our members, right? And they would pay whatever price we wanted to pay, but it would be our book club price. They would not be available to the open market, so there would be no barcode or necessarily no print price on the jacket kind of thing. Like you see with the book clubs, they're not available for sale. You can't go to Barnes and Noble right. and buy one of our book clubs. They're generally published cheaper and so on. The Ted Smarts, I am not sure where they were sold because I've never cared to ask. I've never, I accidentally bought one and sold it immediately because I don't want one in my collection. I don't collect them. A lot of people use Ted Smarts as placeholders because they, there is a noticeable print on them. They do have a first print, second print, third print, and so on. And they only printed up to book five. They were used to kind of get publicity, to get information out. Hey, this is a this is a book that y'all should read kind of thing, kind of like book clubs do. But I, I don't know where they were sold. I've actually never asked that question and I've not researched it. Um, I do know that they're made differently. The one that I had in my hand for all of a few hours was it felt very different. The jacket felt very different. The boards felt different. The paper felt different. Importantly, the Ted Smarts say Ted Smart on the spine of the book. And then they say, if you look at the copyright page, it's published by the book people. And that's very important. If you see book people anywhere on the copyright page, that's a Ted Smart edition. And you, these have, the first prints of those have gone up in value, but... They've gone up in value because people are using them as placeholders for the first print Bloomsbury that they can't afford, soft cover and hard cover. But they can spend a few hundred, eight hundred dollars, nine hundred dollars. Yeah, exactly that. What Eric is showing. Exactly that. They can spend a few hundred dollars for a Ted Smart edition first print as a placeholder for something that they can't afford, which is why, and I touched on this in that post you were talking about a little bit on Facebook. People buy the U.S. book clubs either as a placeholder, and I think more than anything, they buy them because they mistakenly think they have value or they don't know what it is that you're buying or that they're buying. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of mistakes being made, especially with the first print book or not even first print, the book club, U.S. book club editions. Ted Smart's similarly different. They're both secondary publishers. I so don't, just not, going... I was just going to say, going back to, like, my, like, I I guess just, like, the 
simplest answer of the question is like, I would say that the value of a U.S. book club edition, like you shouldn't, again, you shouldn't be paying more than $20 for one. It's worth, Um, what I say book clubs are worth is they're worth the readability. So it's worth what you would pay to read the book. Yeah. And that's, Carly and I have talked about this a lot, even before Melanie joined the show, which was only like 10 episodes after. So not even way, 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 way back about how the U.S. book clubs, they constantly get listed on eBay as like, rare you see it in all caps rare first edition first like on printing. that fa- like on the facebook and, post and and people buy not thinking it's right. a deal and it's, and it's not they just don't know what they're buying right so i think we have an episode called like constant vigilance about like looking at ebay listings because it's so prevalent that people list books that are not valuable for that price and then it gets so hard because one will sell for a really high amount of money, and then other people are like, "Well, I have that same it's one. It's worth it. It's worth this much, and it's a mistake. And it it's hard to argue against yeah. that, but it's also hard to argue for that. So it it, it just gets it gets murky. So I don't know. I have one so- Ted Smart book. It's a Chamber of Secrets, and I bought it because it was cheap, and I didn't have a hardcover right. Chamber of Secrets. And it's a placeholder. Like, oh, so it's a placeholder. I'll buy this. It's, it's a placeholder. Place I bought it for so like ten that- bucks. I always like 10 say, bucks. It wasn't- okay. if you're gonna take a book and throw it up to auction, like Sotheby's, Crispy's, Heritage, any of the big auction places, how do you think it would do? A lot of auction houses don't do Ted Smart. A lot of I don't know an auction house that does any U.S. book clubs minus JLG, and that's iffy. That it wouldn't do. They don't accept them. Right. So that is kind of how I look at that's kind of another not how I just look at it, but that's another thing that I say is if an auction house won't take your product, it's not wanted in the vast wider collecting community. It's just because you think it's rare, just because it's sold on eBay for a high price doesn't mean it's rare, doesn't mean it's valuable, could probably especially book clubs. It's a mistake more than anything. It's still a mistake. The book clubs aren't there. We see book clubs like if we're going to look at book clubs of To Kill a Mockingbird. The U.S. book club of that has got a lot of value. It sells for multi-thousand dollars, but that's because the first print, first edition of that sells for even higher multi-thousand dollars. It's a placeholder. Right. I I will say, like, I think when especially Americans are looking at, like, let's say a Ted Smart book, there's a level of... um, I guess, I don't know, giddiness, right? It's like, oh, a UK book. It's a cover I don't have. Like, there's still that level of like, ooh, it's this different. seems cool. And if someone's telling me it's rare, it might be, right? It's different right. enough. It's not yeah, something if you don't that's commonplace. Know, um, and you're you don't just know. Much like, buying. You know, much like if people from the UK are seeing American books, you right. know, they're like, oh my gosh, it's a first edition, first printing of Order of the Phoenix? Oh my gosh, crazy. They're like, well, no, they, they made... Many of those. Hundreds of... Right. Thousands, maybe even a million of, of those prints. I think it was so, like 700 um, or 580 first print, first edition Order of the Phoenix is something like that. It's a lot. 580,000? I mean, yeah, yeah it's, it's a lot. So and by the time we get to Deathly Hallows, million, over a million. Oh, yeah. Right? So, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think there still is a lot of, I, don't, it, I hate using the word naive, right? Because we all love Harry Potter, and I don't want to say that people but it is naive. are being duped. Because, but... But it, it it is a little, but there's still, there's something to that, like, oh, this is from another country. I don't know enough about this. But we... Like, I'm excited about it. And I get that excitement because, obviously, I bought this Ted Smart right. book, too, because I didn't have a book, too. I paid $10. I knew it wasn't worth that. But I'm like, hey, I don't have this. It's from another country. Um, But just like people that don't have Bloomsbury UK books in the United States or Canada... We don't live in the UK, so we don't go to the secondhand bookstores and see just shelves of these things for sale for not a whole lot of money. So in this- we see one pop up in like a mainstream eBay listing that we're looking for in eBay with US. With Rare. Or with Rare for an inflated value. It's not something that we're exposed to often enough to really know what what is, it is that we're really looking for versus what it is that is just being shown to us. And, and said is rare. So um, going, again, that's just really important to do your research and to ask questions with to people that know the answers. But 
like going back to that, to the first question, how many times have we seen on eBay? And I'm going to be really quick. How many times have we seen on eBay where it's like rare Spanish translation of Harry Potter books one through seven? And they're not rare at all, but they're different. They're not in our country. We're not where the usual mayor, although you can go to your Barnes and Noble and buy them if you know where to look. Sure can. But a lot of people don't know that they're not exposed to it. So it's considered quote unquote rare. And so there's a lot of confusion that it hype that accidentally inflates price sometimes. And that causes confusion in the marketplace. But that does not mean the book is worth what it's selling for. And that is the point I've been trying to make. Yes. 50 years ago when the internet wasn't prevalent. Yeah. A Spanish translation of Harry Potter might be rare for someone living in Wichita, Kansas. Um, no, because but they had not, book shows. Not, not, not today. If you were a book that's collector, that's true. You but know it would be rare. You wouldn't. You wouldn't know, right? You wouldn't know the extent of things. Um, but now, like, just go on Google and type in Harry Potter Spanish translation. You can go to like ten websites mm-hmm. and buy it for under ten dollars. So, yeah. so the long and yeah, short it, of it's, all it's of hard. this is confusion in the marketplace. And just because a book is selling Melody. for what you think it is doesn't mean it's worth what it's selling for. But I got carried away. Exactly. (laughs) Melanie, I want to know what your thoughts are on the next question, which is, will we get to 100 unique languages? And I feel like then you need to uh, explain a little bit more. (laughs) (sighs) All right. Because here's the thing is I feel like, we said all of these like beautiful praises before about our discord, right? And it's like, it is a blessing, but it is like also a curse because there's just a plethora of knowledge. And this term has like come out of the woodworks of macro translation. And that has made it like it has made things really murky in the translation collecting community as far as um what is counted in our list and as of right now like we have 100 books on our list right we have 100 books because we are considering like these second translations and these revised editions but like a 101 now? What's yeah, 101? Because Catalan has a revised text block. What? And Brock's listening right now in our in our live listening, and he's the one that discovered this. <laughs> and I just um, found out about it last night because I was so behind on the Discord from being in to... Kansas City. And I was like, oh. but I have both of them already. And you probably too. I do probably also. do too. What's what what is yeah. it? Which, um, which one is the, is it, it's revised? If you have the wizard hat and then you have a Thomas Taylor art one, I think you're covered. Yeah, I do. Okay, so, but, so but then again, it's that, a revised, that, you said? It's been revised enough. Um, okay, has so. has a lot of significant changes on page one of the book. So, continue. Okay. Sorry to interrupt. All right, here's the thing, is I feel like I'm, I'm having like this battle of, like revised editions being considered these macro translations verse and and needing to differentiate those books versus books that have been retranslated so retranslation by a different person right so i'm talking about korean was retranslated macedonian mongolian romanian russian uh and croatian and Turkish and Croatian. Okay, so those ones have been. Uh, I'm I'm like making a list for myself now because I feel yeah. like I feel like this is like important. So we're doing, guys. This is live on the air. This this is happening, and, and we're we're going over our list right now because this is stressing me out so much. So Croatian, Korean, Mon- uh, Macedonian, Mongolian, Romanian, Russian and Turkish are all retranslated. Those, honestly, I feel like those should count in my list. Like, that's my yeah, vibe. It's, They've it's been an re- entirely new it's translation. Enti- okay, but in the same breath as that, 
that doesn't make them unique languages because the language has already been been there, done that, right? Yeah. Then the other things that need to get looked at are the um whatchamacallits. Not adaptation, the transliterated. I feel like trans- transliterations. I feel like transliterations also need to be looked at as being something different. Because Braille, like we said, we went down like a whole rabbit hole of Braille because Braille, it can be translated into all these different languages. How come we're not counting all of those? We just count Braille as one Braille, right? But that was that was the debate. Is Braille a transliteration or is it a adaptive specialized format of a text? Like that was the debate. And people have different opinions. And um, Harrison is still going for a specialized format. And I trust him because... He's the only one I know that can read Braille. Yeah, so, I trust Harrison's. Harrison, ad, I trust Harrison's opinion of the Braille. Uh, okay, so uh, okay, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go through these books on my list that are like questionable. And here's the thing, too. I'm gonna preface all of this by saying, I regardless of what I count on this list or what I think of these books, I have all of them, so it's all fine. Like it's all good, right? Well, and and. This goes for the, like, we were talking on our, on our Discord when Brock was talking about Catalan. Like, how many other of the original translations, like the really early adopters, like French or Swedish or Finnish, um, German, like Carly just mm-hmm. mentioned, how many of those are, like, linguistic, linguistically interesting enough to warrant a different category in the category you're about well, to Well, we mention? know, like, because Italian and Chinese for sure. Right, exactly. So, like, I mean, and the Chinese it, Harry really, lived in a bowl it's cabinet. It's really hard, and it's hard because we it's don't. Really hard. Uh, I'm curious about honestly. One of the ones that I'm curious about is Croatian. They have so, they have different editions as well, and it's not uncommon for these books, as we've seen with you know German, for example, Italian, Chinese, and so on, um, for these uh, to revise. As the series goes on, one of the ones I'm actually curious about is Tibetan. Tibetan reprinted with books two and three as far. And then third print, it reprinted books one and two. But, you know, there there's so much spacing in between the Tibetans, book one, two and three, that I'm curious if they didn't revise something. And we don't read Tibetan. So how would we know? Right. Right. So my my point, though, is that. Whether or not what Melanie is going to say about the list criteria and, and, and books that we have questions about, I am still very excited when people discover these new things because they're things that people don't know outside of the country that they're published in. And even within that country, people might not even know. Like, I, I'm, I'm guessing that there are Americans that don't know that there are updates to the text that they have read like for like book four right with the um um the the scene with Voldemort and Harry and the people are coming out of Voldemort's wand and they mm-hmm. there's an error in there right and stuff gets changed and updated but maybe not to the extent that some of these books that Melanie's going to mention have been updated but that's still to me very interesting that these books are changing and that people are discovering them that aren't like People from those countries, people just here uh, that are reading these books that that like collecting translations are discovering like notable differences in text blocks. So okay, that so, is very exciting. So I feel and like very stressful I feel like time. we need like a category of like. So now I feel like for the longest time it was like translation, transliteration, second translation. And adaptation. Adaptation, adaptation and um, whatchamacallit, and what's the word that we said before? Tran- transliter- transliteration. Transliteration. Oh, transliteration. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay, so, because if we're going through this list, we're, we're going to go through, we're going through this list right now. We're doing this right now. Sorry, this is happening. Okay. All right. This is... Th- and th- this will be it for the questions because this is going to take time. And this is, is this happening right now? All right, let's do it. Afrikaans, we're good. Albanian, we're good. Arabic. So now we're talking that there are three Arabic books, right? There is the original, there is an abridged, and there's a re- revised. 
in my in my Melanie brain, if I have one of those, I'm good. That's that's well, I and, I have all so, three or all three on the way, but in my head, if I have one, I'm good. I I think in Eric brain criteria, I'm good too because it's the same publisher and it is the same person that did the translation. Correct. It is the same translator. Correct. And I want all three. Yeah. So because it's but I'm, I have all three too. Because, Agreed. Because I like translation collecting and I I like language preservation. I think it's important for me to get some of these books if I know that they're different enough to get. But I don't think that changes my. It doesn't. Like it does me. It does, it, like yes. I want. Like if I would have not known, let's say the German revised. Going back to that, and I haven't like book one, chapter one, title change. But I haven't seen a whole lot of. I've also not I read past book one. I, I, will, I will go back and say that Sean's looking into this now because he wasn't aware of the German Yeah, you can hear it like on the... Um, oh, okay. Thank you, Sean. You can hear it on the uh, the Book That Lives project. Okay. Um, I, well, this but is it, a good time before cha- Melanie it, continues. Hmm? Oh, I was, I was going to say, Sean Potterglot from Canada, which we, we were jokingly blaming Canada for the macro editions. Wonderful person. He's been on the show. We love him so much. Um, We've known him for a long totally time. Ingest. He's delightful. That we're stressed about this um, because he is looking into these so in depth. Um, so we have no hard feelings against John. No, we think he's love him. A wonderful, a wonderful human. Love the so, guy. All right. Love the guy. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue on. Okay? okay. Armenian, Asturian, Azerbaijani, Basque, Belarusian, Bengali, Bosnian, Breton, Bulgarian. All good. Catalan, now we're finding out that there's a revised. Again, I have the regular and I have what would be the revised. So cool. But as long as I have one, I'm good. Like that's where I'm kind of at. Right. Well, and the books that you just mentioned that are good, quote, good, as far as we know, they're good. We haven't really looked I, deep exactly. into some of those. Exactly. Right? So, okay. Okay. What were we saying before about Chinese? Because I just have Chinese simplified and Chinese traditional. But there's also I've simplified, heard that there's differences. Yes. And Harrison's mentioned that yes. there are differences with the simplified. So the, um, but I did send pages to Potterglot, John Potterglot, and he said no. So I there's a debate there. That I would Harrison and Sean. I would believe have. Harrison just because he. Not that I don't believe Potterglot. Potterglot's very very full of knowledge. But I've also heard it from lots of other people saying that this is revised. Um, so not just Harrison. Um, simplified Chinese. It is simplified. simplified it's out of Chinese. mainland China. And it is with the cover change, from my understanding, Katsu Kabuishi. We have Mary Grand Prey, Katsu Kabuishi. And then we have uh, Johnny Duddle. Johnny Duddle is supposedly revised. And then on out, it's supposedly revised. Okay. I thought the Kibuishi one was the cutoff. Mm-mm. Okay. I heard Duddle was. All right. So, uh, and I have all so of next, them. So I, I have them both. Yeah. And the bilingual one. Same. And the they bilingual stink one to that high mine doesn't, mine doesn't smell bad. I was very disappointed. Okay. Uh, that's too um, <laughs> okay. Croatian. And now Croatian second translation. New translator. N- like. Yeah. N- new I, book. I would. Eric's list makes the cut for sure. Makes the makes the cut. A, a, agreed. Makes the cut. Um, mm-hmm. Different enough. For book makes, one at least, right? Totally. Okay. So, so in my head, it gets a number. Like that's that's kind of where I'm going with this. Does this get a number? or Does it not get a number? And we're going through this. This is happening live. Um, okay. Czech, Danish, and we can't we can't change our mind after. Never after this ever. Year, yeah, we, so. we can. We can. We always change our <laughs> yes, minds. We can. You know. Of course we can. All right. Czech, Danish, Dutch, and then we have English, as in, like, British, which is the book, like, whatever, um, American English, and then I just have Braille to have the transliteration of Braille once in my collection, and we've discussed a lot of times, like, if you want to have Braille in German, awesome, like, if that's how you want to represent Braille in your collection, and that's how you want to do you. I, in my head, I'm like, as long as there is a Braille on my shelves, I have Braille. Yeah, I agree. Because I don't need UK and US English Braille. And I don't. 
which I have both actually. I would get. I, know. I would get and rid some of. Some people do. I, I I purposefully was like I, do. I don't want to buy both. I know. I would honestly. I'd get rid of one. If anyone wants a braille? Um. Okay. So. All right. I'm gonna keep going. So again, those get numbers: Estonian, Faroese, Farsi, or Persian, Filipino, Finnish, French, um, Galician, Georgian, German. And now German, Carly is saying, is well, I don't revised. Know. I don't know how much. I've only seen just the t- the just the chapter one title change because I've All not right, read much past like, it. So if, the, I would need to German's investigate that. If German's been revised, that. if German's been revised that much, cl- like yeah, Dutch must have been. Well, I'm curious. So, same with honestly, Finnish, right? Right? but one I, of the things I'm all on Harrison and I have talked but, about but in horror is what if they sneak in revisions every new cover art they throw at us, like Estonian, for example. What if they throw in revisions with the new new covers? We wouldn't. We don't read Estonian. We don't know. Same with right. So, okay, so it. I'm, I'm going to put it on this list that I'm working on right now, but it doesn't get a number. In my head, it doesn't okay. get a number. All right. Because it's revised. Low German, Ancient Greek, Modern Greek, Greenland, Greenlandic, Gujarati, Hawaiian, Hebrew, Hindi, Hungarian, Icelandic, Indonesian, Irish. All good. Get a number. I thought Italian, Icelandic had some, diff- had some revisions. I don't think enough yet that anyone's discovered, but people can look into that one, too. Because All I right. want to say, like, the unusual cover art versus Grand Pre, I want to I wanna say I heard there were revisions between the two. Oh, people can check that out. Yeah, that person. Yeah. Is and I'm just saying that person. I don't speak Ice. Speak Iceland. That's not okay. my job. Uh, so then Italian, and we've been counting Italian revised like as another translation. I'm I'm not I'm taking its number. I'm saying in my head I'm saying revised is not getting a number on my list right now. So and like I said again. I have the books. If I wanted to count them, I could because I have them. But I'm not giving it a number right, right now. But it's 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 the same publisher and not a different person doing the translation. Right. Right. That's that's what you're saying. Ding ding ding. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Japanese, Kazakh, Khmer, Korean, Korean was retranslated, and we didn't even by a different person. By a different yep. person. For, we didn't know for a few years. That was during COVID. Yeah. I yeah. bought mine. Yeah. Oh my gosh, Eric loves that book. He'll tell you all about it. He did a bonus episode <laughs> it's a and everything. Bonus episode all about it. It's, it's, oh gosh. Okay, it's so might be one of my favorites. Again, time. because it's retranslated, it's getting a number. Done. Okay. Latin, Latvian, Lithuanian, Luxembourgish, Macedonian, Macedonian second translation. Different person. Different person. Good. Gets a number. Malayalam, Malaysian, Maori, Marathi, Mongolian, Mongolian second translation. Different publisher. Right. Crazy. And different person. things. Right. All the different yeah. things. Gets a number. Nepali, Norwegian, Occitan, Polish. And this is this is a thing too. I feel like because uh, and I'm going along with what we said before for like Chinese versus tr- simplified versus traditional. They're two different languages. So like Portuguese, Brazilian and Portuguese, European Portuguese in my head are two different They're languages. Two different. Yeah. Two different publishers, two different, sometimes different cover art. Completely different. And then they have different editions in my head, as well. Yeah. So they're, they're separate. They're separate. Yeah. I would say, I would say com- and completely And book six different. has different titles. Well, so. They're probably more different than UK English, US English. For sure. Honestly. So yeah, clearly they would count as two separate ones. Mm-hmm. For sure. Um, okay. So then Romanian, Romanian second translation, the same with Russian and Russian second translation, completely different, gets numbers. Different person. Yep. Right. And Scots, publisher. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. And now I feel like this this is very similar to our English, what we were saying before, how there's three different English books. There's British, American, and Braille in Melanie Brain. There's English Braille. Same thing for Serbian, mm-hmm. where there's Latin, Cyrillic, and Montenegrin. 
right? But Montenegro right, will sit the, and argue I mean, that they're a separate language. They will sit and tell you they're separate. Like I've, they will sit and tell you they're a separate language entirely from Serbian. It is more of an identity Which thing. Serbian Latin, Serbian is in Latin, and Montenegrin is in Latin also. Right. So like, right. they're both Latin, but then Serbian one, also but is isn't a Cyrillic one, transliteration. One is an adaptation, and one is a transliteration. Like they're Serbian, and then Montenegrin is I an adaptation of the Serbian. Depends. It depends is who it, you ask. It, right. That's. That. I feel like that's what we always like. Kind of. So Montenegrin said, but, is. There's a lot of ideology surrounding, I'm a Montenegrin speaker, I'm from Montenegro, and they will sit and tell you, I don't speak Serbian, I speak Mont- Montenegrin. I've seen it in different interviews, I've read it in different things. So there's a lot of linguistic pride around that. So it's more of a identity thing, and that is linguistic boundaries are going to be very blurry because of that. So it really depends okay, on how you that- want to count it. That being that being the case, I, I think count them, that we I can count them as separate go things. around. I count them as separate things because I, I do too. They're identity wise, they're so, separate. So three books, yeah. right? Yep. I all get a number. Three separate things. I I completely agree. Um, Sinhala, Slovak, Slovenian, and now just <laughs> I'm going to be brief. Spanish. We have four books. We have the original Spanish. We have European Spanish. Latin American and Southern Cone. I think anything differing from those four books are revised and do not get numbers. I think that's fair. As far as we know, unless yeah. something exists that we haven't discovered. Which is yet. possible right. with Which is possible. With this, with Which is possible. We never know. Okay. So then okay, so let's we're go, we're gonna keep it brief and we're gonna keep it kind of as that that there are four that we count for. Swedish Tamil, Telugu, Thai, Tibetan, Turkish, Turkish second translation. Get numbers. Ukrainian, Urdu, Valencian, Vietnamese, Welsh, West Frisian, and Yiddish. Numbers, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. That being said, with all of the, the numbers, not numbers, that is a list of 97. If we subtract one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, let me count that again. One, two, three. I think I did this before. So four, five, six, seven. Maths, maths, maths. Dialogue Alley maths. If we subtract seven of the books that were the second translations, that puts us at a number of 90. And that's just saying if we wanted to collect translations, Unique languages. You could Are you say adaptations and transliterations in that. That's in the ninety. Yes. What are you counting for? Just languages and not adaptations. Okay, so we're at ninety. Let's subtract one, two, three. Hold on, minus three, four, because Valencian five. A lot of Spanish too. Yeah, I counted those. That's five. Mm-hmm. Uh, How do you rank Valencian? Boxing. Because it's Six, an seven. I counted it. Technically an adaptation. Seven. It's an adaptation of Catalan. I did. I, ca- I counted it in this number that's in my brain. Seven. I'm going to count that again. One. Two. Three. Four. Four. Uh, how did I get to seven? Five, six, English. Seven is Serbian. So, so that's eighty-three. So the number is eighty-three languages. We're at eighty-three languages. Moment of silence. Moment of silence. <laughs> 83 okay so that's like kind of crazy so like if so if you're someone that you're counting your list as unique languages purely unique languages not second translations not transliterations not um adaptations then your number is 83 if you are counting second translations and you're counting um uh like 
the adaptation of that language to meet a dialect and transliteration, so like Braille or Cyrillic Serbian, then your number is 90. If you're counting, oh no, it's 97. Now I'm, I'm saying so many numbers. 90 is without the second translations, right? 97 is with those second There's translations. There's so many numbers. I'm, I don't math. With. Math. Um, so in my brain, I'm at 97. I think that's, I don't know where I am. I'll say 97 as I, well. My my number is is unique languages plus transliterations plus adaptations of the languages. I also count revisions plus though. plus. Well, if you're counting if revisions, revisions, then your then number is one hundred one. Mm-hmm. Is at least one hundred one. Right. That's that. Your number is at least one hundred one. In my head, I like thinking that it's at ninety seven. I like ninety seven. I feel good about it. I think, yeah, it's just that with ling- with languages, it's very much a slippery slope, right? It's a very cool slippery slope, but it is a slippery one. I think if this last question really piqued your fancy and you're like, hey, I want to weigh in on this, our Discord is the perfect place for <laughs> you to be because um, after this episode drops, Surely everyone will be talking about this. Yeah, this is going to be a bomb drop. This is going to be a big bomb drop. It's going to be like so much discussion. Yeah, I'm just going to probably go on vacation. (laughs) For a little Um, bit. It'll be a lot. uh, I'm sorry. That was like a massive, that was a massive question. But I I feel like it needed to happen, guys. Go ahead. I agree. Um, I do want to address the very last question, and I think we can say yes or no very easily. And that's will we will Harry Potter increase in popularity? I think yes. We already we're already seeing it. So yeah, I think so too. I yes. I don't think it's going anywhere. On the record, Eric, yes. Yeah, we're already seeing that. So that's that's not a long drawn out. Oh, it can be, but we don't have to make it be one now. No, I think I don't think it's going anywhere. I think that what we're doing is gonna keep on doing. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Agreed. Um, um, yeah, I think it's time to get into the translation of the show because I'm super excited about it. Yay! All right. Well, if you are waiting for me to host a segment of this show, wait no longer because I am hosting the translation of the show. And the translation of the show for this episode is the new Estonian, new like it's a new cover, not a new translation, not a new uh, anything that we know of linguistically interesting edition that we know of. It is just literally a new cover. Of the Estonian Goblet of Fire, which you guys, I think we've talked about before. These new Estonian covers that are coming out are just like on fire, as as we'll say, with the Goblet of Fire spirit. Um, mm-hmm. The color choices that they've used for all of them are spot on. It, it's one of those covers that are simple, yet really effective. And stands kind of out. Like, um, they stand the, out. Yeah. Exactly. And they're all different colors. So you put them on your shelf, the spines are different colors, and they're solid colors too. So it, it really is a cool looking um, array of colors on your shelf. And and these are all still coming out, I think. Um, Deathly Hallows, has that been announced yet? I, uh, I, think, so. I think so. I think, I say think, I think it's been announced. Yes. I don't think it's out, but I think that's been announced. They're almost done with all of these. Um, my parents are going to Estonia this summer, and I'm like, hmm. Maybe they could just get the rest of them that I need. Minimal but then they'd have to cost. carry them around the rest of Europe for well, like you two weeks. So maybe not. Um, but maybe. Who knows? Maybe so you should. The one we're gonna we'll focus talk you on, into it. Maybe. We'll talk you into it. The one we're gonna focus on this episode is the Goblet of Fire edition. Uh the translator of this is the same translator that has done all of the Estonian books. It is Krista Kair and Kaisa Kair. 
So it's a, a team, one of those team translations. You know, Which we don't know how they do it. I maybe, feel like maybe it's the every first, other word. Yeah, I think the first no, I'm just book kidding. was <laughs> I think the first two books or all of the the first translator translator that you said did all of the books and then the second translator came on and helped for the last bit, the last few books. They're okay. significantly longer. So I feel like that like kind of makes sense that it turned into uh, a team for Brock later books. Brock just mentioned Deathly Hallows has yet to be revealed. I was just about so to say that. I'm ready. Before we get, Death- I'm yeah. ready. Before we get Let's someone go. to email us that says, hey, you're wrong, because we don't want to be wrong. Um, <laughs> no, it has So the not. publisher is um, Barak Publishers from Estonia. And a general info on the language. We've done Estonian before, I believe, haven't we? Yes. We've had a book one. Yes, yeah. we have. It's been a bit. It's been a bit. Um, so... It's it's written in the Latin script, which I think is important to note, and it's the official language of Estonia, and which is one of the also, blah, which is also one of the official languages of the European Union. Um, it's spoken by about 1.1 million people, um, which includes just under a million people in Estonia and about 160 thousand outside of Estonia. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. So pretty cool. Um, it's one of those languages where it's popular but not that widely spoken. Like, it, it's weird yeah. because, it, it, like, I don't ever see this language dying out, no. yet the speaker base is pretty low compared to other Well, it's kind of like Greenland, right? Yeah. Or, or Iceland, where it's a yeah, low exactly. speaker base, but it's the main language of the country, so it's not going anywhere. Exactly. Um, so rarity, uh, on a scale of one to five, how to get the Goblet of Fire edition of the new cover of Estonian. I mean, you guys, I'm giving it, like, a between a one and a two right like you have to do a tiny bit of extra work to get this book <laughs> but you can just go online and buy it super easily yeah which is great because this book is spoiler alert pretty cool looking and you might want it um yeah so eric like by you might want it i mean eric might want it <laughs> and that's me um and i'm i mean th- these are books that I, I will get and i'm not rushing out to get them because i know they're super easy to get right now so i'm just waiting for appropriate time to kind of make an order <laughs> or see if my parents want to bring them back from Estonia this summer. So let's see. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Um, value. I would say value of a new book plus yep. shipping yeah. cost. And we know shipping from Europe. We've talked about it time and time again um, is higher than it usually has been to the United States. So shipping is going to be a factor in buying this book. Yeah. So I, I think if you can buy them all together, if you're looking to get all of them, that would probably save you some money. If you're buying them individually with separate shipping orders, that's going to be ridiculously it's going to be more expensive. money on shipping. Yeah. So if you're going to get all of them, I would say import all of them in one order. So you might want to wait till Deathly Hallows is out if you don't have any of them, because then you can get them all at once. And they might release one of those like, Oh, now that we've had them all out, we can do a box. That's set of what all I'm of waiting them. to they, see. I'm sure. I'm sure that's gonna happen. I, I started we'll to hear, about it. Then we'll get to hear Melanie talk about it. <laughs> I know it happens. It's it one happens of, in like all of these amazing books. It's so, like, one of my one least cover favorite things that happens, but at the same time, it is what it is. At this point, I just it need to suck is. it up and just like deal with the fact that half these boxes, I'm not gonna actually have the box. It's fine. I'll I will prevail. It's fine. It really it, it's the cover more than the box for some of these. So value again, the cost of a new book plus shipping from Estonia yeah. to wherever you are in the world. And well so, worth it. They're beautiful. Um, I love these it. new covers. Oh, well worth it. Um, so speaking of well worth it, let's talk about why it's well worth it. Let's give this book a smell. Again, I don't have it, so I'm smelling my book um, one for first the win. book in this series, which it's it's the same. It came out relatively soon, so it should smell the same. I mean, I'm giving it an exceeds expectations. I, it smells like woodsy. Like it smells woodsy. I was gonna say it smells like wood. Yeah, which yeah. papers wood. So it smells it's not very. Gluey. It's no, not, it's, it's not, not gluey. chemically. It's very woodsy. No, it smells really nice. Uh, yeah, exceeds expectations. It kind of reminds me really of nice. almost like a cedar chip kind of. Yeah. Ooh, mm-hmm. yeah. Like a like a little like, like or a warmth like, like there's pile. a warm smell to it like a cedar, like a warm cedar or something like that. So I'm I'm a fan of the smell of this book definitely. Love it. So what are you giving it, Carly? We have a Melanie. I'm gonna actually Eric, say oh, and... I'm gonna give it an outstanding because oh. it makes me oh <laughs> I know. 
But the reason Whoa. is, as I first, I know, big, big things here are happening. But I gave it an O because when I first smelled it, I felt instantly at home. Like I knew when I smelled it, I would want to buy all seven, despite like even if they were the same Marigan pay covers, I'd probably want to buy these and trade in my others just because I love how how and these are so much nicer than the than the Grand Prix, you know, Estonian books. But that's neither here nor there. That's a separate episode. But I love how these separate smell. Um, and I, I it's an outstanding like I instantly felt like they remind me of Hagrid. Like if Hagrid, if I could smell Hagrid, this is kind of how I think Hagrid would smell. Interesting. Woodsy and kind of outdoorsy. <laughs> Cedary. Like, that's, that's what I think you'd All smell right. like, um, leather. With like a touch of brandy funny. in there. Size and proportions. Melanie, you are holding this one. What say you for book four? I would give it an outstanding, honestly. Um, I love the size of proportions. It reminds me a lot of Swedish, where it's like that square kind of. Like, it is a very, like, squarish book. Um, it is, I mean... Goblet of Fire in general is a very, it's very bulky. She big. Um, but yeah, size and proportions, it is absolutely outstanding. I just love, love like when you showed the spine just now, I'm going to give it an outstanding based on a, just because I think I'm going to love it. Like look at the spine versus the height of the book. It's an amazing thing. It kind of reminds me a little bit of Swedish and Czech actually. So it's going to get an outstanding for me on this as well. Love this book. Love it. I I don't know. I can't give it a grade. I don't have it, but I trust Melanie, so we'll go with that. Aw, thanks. Well, also, like, book one is so good. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I can't imagine they would get book four wrong. No. Right? It's not like some of these that we've seen that, like, book one is good, but we know if it follows that trend, by the time they get to the beefier ones, it's going to be a little, like, Ugh. It's going to be disappointing. Like, I don't this feel isn't I don't that. Feel that. I don't feel that way with these. No. So, Melanie, how does it feel in your hand? Um, I'm giving it, no, I'm, mm-mm. I'm like between exceeds expectations and outstanding. I feel like because of the fact that the cover, like the lip of the cover kind of goes a l- pretty far past the pages and because it's so hard, it can kind of be a little bit uncomfortable. However, if I was reading this book, it has such a lovely spine that it doesn't crack when it opens and kind of just falls right open. So it's like one of those like begging to be read books. I'm going to um, give it an outstanding no, based on what you're showing. I'm giving me. it an outstanding. Yeah. I know. I'm giving I'm giving it outstanding because that's one of my favorite things. I like being able to open the book without worrying that the spine is going to crack and this you can do that. Just does that. There's a certain amount it's, of magic it's, in that. Yeah. Oh, it's 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 just wonderful. And I also just love the texture of the cover. It's a matte finish texture. Um the, just, I love so that. Nice. I love how the covers feel in my hand. That's a big thing for me. I will go along with you on that too. That sounds great. Um when we get into quality, we could, we could mention right now, this is a hardcover book, but it does not have a dust jacket. So it is just one of those hardcover books with pages on the inside um, and nothing else. I mean, I'm going to say that it's an outstanding as well for quality. The The boards are super thick and durable. Um, the corners are very, very sharp. Like there's no dinging curve anything to these corners and like i said before the corners do stick out quite a bit from the pages so i feel like it could kind of warrant that um oh that's so cool yeah it, it's just like i don't know it's it's really really nice it's bound very tight but like i said the way that they designed the hardcover book it kind of just falls open anyway so you don't have to worry about the spine cracking it's outstanding I'd agree. These mm-hmm. books are made uh, very well. I would say outstanding. Like, they are made. Yeah. They are made with both fans of the book and the reader in mind. I think they're really well done. Um, my favorite part, actually, maybe maybe it's not. Maybe my favorite part of this is now the X fact. <gasps> Ooh, might be. Um, I mean, of, of of this whole segment, I think the X factor to me is what I look forward to the most. But uh, the cover art slash interpretation of cover art. I'm going to go first. It's outstanding. These books are incredible. The way that they do kind of what the Swedish Ali Moss books do, like 
it's the same book, but it's different. And it's different enough, especially with these that they're different colors with the spines. Um, just it, It's really cool. So, like, the, these books have the same kind of format. However, at the bottom of the cover, they have different images that pertain to each individual mm-hmm. book in the series. So, the top is the Harry Potter glasses with some kind of cool, like, geometric shapes in there. Then there's always the title, uh, which is done in, in just a really cool very simple font and then the bottom are all images that pertain to the book so the uh goblet of fire book the goblet of fire is obviously right in the middle um there are some other things in there like the the dark mark is in there there are some broomsticks there's some wands mer people um mer people oh mm-hmm. my gosh yeah that is a mer person wow um really really cool versus like book one that carly and i both are looking at like the mirror of erised mm-hmm. is very prominent there are like the keys, the snitch, the broom, the umbrella, the sorting hat, the chess pieces, the unicorn, the potion bottles from the from the um like Snape challenge. I don't know what we'd call it. And that. the back have the, the, the wonderful Hogwarts silhouette. Yes, and it's like done. It, it's the same for all the books, mm-hmm. I believe. They're just done in in different colors. And um, I mean, I don't want to. Well, before I go to the X factor, I mean, outstanding for me. How about you two? Absolutely. I mean, absolutely. It's an outstanding. It's I love sure how similarly different they are. Like, how can you not want all of yes. them? Exactly. Um, they, they really look like a set of books, mm-hmm. which is super cool. And that's something that illustrators are able to do when, like, they know what all seven books are. Right. We yeah. talk about that all the time. The X factor for me, you guys, the barcode on the back is like in like the little doorway into the castle and it's not even a rectangle it's there and it's like the shape of the doorway into the castle with the uh a little little barcode in the door it's so cool i mean that that to me is like like why did they have to do that they didn't but they did and it's amazing it is amazing i have two x factors um my first one is the fact that you have this like beautiful matte cover and all of those little images and details that we were talking about on the front cover are done with a glossy finish mm-hmm. and i love that they do that on the bosnian yeah. books yes um, yes yes and bosnian. yep and and i i always love that um so that is my one of my x factors the other is the color of this book i i'm just always drawn to these teal books yeah, um same. i say it all the time about the I'm turning around to look at it, but the Danish paperback of Half-Blood Prince, um, I feel the same way about the Dutch 20th anniversary hardcover of Half-Blood Prince. It always kind of seems to be like Half-Blood Prince have these just beautiful teal yeah. covers for whatever reason. Well, Mary Grand um, Prey used green, so I think yeah. that's a bit that's kind of an influence somewhere. And then UK was yeah, like so, blue um, and fire. But like well, actually, Goblet of Fire for like the deluxe illustrated is like a really nice teal color, cool color as well. Too. So, I, yeah. Um, but this color is literally like in the dictionary and where it says like Melanie's favorite color. This is the color. This I color was waiting right for here. the dictionary this, this entry. Specific, <laughs> this specific shade of teal is my favorite. This is my favorite color. It's just beautiful. Um, so, yeah, those are my two X factors is the color choice and these glossy details i am in love with mine as weird as it is because it's gonna be the same on all the back all the books is the hogwarts on the back i love how it's just done in like different colors and silhouette and yet we know what it is without even if you just glance at it you know but i like how there's there's not a lot of details the details are on the front cover for and this is a minor detailed book comparatively to the others but i love Hogwarts in the back as an X factor. Like, it's just like, oh, I want to go. It's like Hogwarts in the distance and we're getting closer kind of thing, right? I love how they did that. But you can't go through the gate because the, the barcode bar says no. <laughs> Raise the barcode. <laughs> Raise the barcode so we may enter Doth Castle. Oh, uh, that's the dad joke Ye of the show. Enter. <laughs> Is it though? I, don't, I think so. I don't know. I think it's possible. Uh, <laughs> Such a good book, though. Highly recommend. Right. So, 
yeah, these Estonian books, if you if you want I'll, I'll I'll backpedal. If you collect translations and all you care about is the language and you want unique art, which I think a lot of people that are looking at translations look for, I would totally go for this versus the original Estonian which has the Mary Grand Pre um American art on it. These books just look so cool on your shelves. I cannot recommend enough that you pick at least one of them up um, to showcase. I mean, I have one. I'm going to get all seven of these at some point. They're really, really cool. And they're relatively cheap. I mean, like cheap compared to books that aren't in print anymore because these are currently being published. If you went to Estonia right now, you would see these on the shelf and you could buy them. So get them. If you like translations, if you like cool art, Goblet of Fire, the teal color is awesome, but really any of these Estonian books are really, really cool. So that's that's an Eric hot recommendation of the show, Whew. which is not a segment, but I'm just saying it right now. Well, with all of that being said, that is all we are going to have time for today on this episode of Dialogue Alley. If you would like to get in touch with us, you can find us on Instagram, Carly at All the Pretty Books, Eric at Nocturne Eric, or me at the Harry Potter Collection. You can also find us at our website. Um, Carly's is alltheprettybooks.net. Mine is the harrypottercollection.com. And website for this podcast is dialoguealley.com and that's where you're going to find pictures of the translation of the show um you can also find other pictures of everything that we're gonna be talking about or all all those books um you're gonna find those on our dialogue alley instagram which is at dialogue alley podcast um, you can also find us on twitter dialogue underscore alley or on facebook you can find me on tiktok at Magically Melanie. Um, and remember, you can always just listen to us on Apple, on Google, on all your other, all of those places. You can just listen to us. It's magical. It's pretty great. Um, one of the other places that you can find us is on MuggleNet, which is under the MuggleNet family of podcasts is where you're going to find us. Um, pretty cool bunch of other places that you can find us um another thing that you could do if you love our podcast you can support us on patreon which you can find that at www.patreon.com slash dialogue alley and that's where you're gonna have access to our discord there are a bunch of different tiers um and in doing that you get access to bonus episodes early listening to our episodes access to the lists access to better understanding of all of the books that we were talking about today. Um, and, it's, and resources to buy them. Yeah. Too, yeah. Which is great. We've had it's, a lot of people say an, that we've saved them money, so I'll take it. Yeah. It's, which is great considering like, Oh, you're thinking, Oh, I pay a subscription to be a Patreon for dialogue alley. But think about all the money that you're saving. If you were going to be buying these translations in not knowledgeable platforms i don't know yeah, it, so it makes books that would be like a two or a three like difficulty to find maybe to someone that's not looking for them at, like more like a one or a two because it's like oh here's a link to go buy it for the best price mm-hmm. so and every yeah everyone's super great you can ask questions like there are no dumb questions on our discord um i feel like i'm the one that's asking the dumb questions majority of the time but people make me feel really great about myself so it's a nice place to be um I think that's all of this. That's everything. That is everything about this podcast. I don't know. I think I said. I think I said it all. I, well, I said at the beginning this was going to be a silly episode. It turned into a really long one because we had to go over a lot of information. We had a lot to um, say. Had to be done. Had to be done, guys. When you guys, you guys weren't here last week, so you had a lot to say. <laughs> it had. I'm to exhausted. Be done. I've been here. I've only missed one episode, and I'm not. I'm not missing another one. Maybe I'll miss you, another one. Who knows? You better not. You better not. You got to be here for all uh, the episodes. Okay. <laughs> but for tonight, it is now time to walk back through the archway and into our daily lives, and we will catch you next time. Bye. Bye. See ya.